What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new Road Reflections. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Getting out of a parking garage. That's what I'm doing right now. I hate dealing with parking garages. Because uh, I always feel rushed when I'm leaving a parking garage. <laughs> you know? Where they're just like, you got, you got this amount of time to get out of the fucking garage. Or else we'll keep your car in here. Till the end of time. And they got all these all these big ass fucking poles and stuff everywhere. It's rather annoying. But other than that, I'm doing pretty good today. Uh, it's been a it's been a, a, a good week, uh, you guys. If you if you caught the live streams, both the live streams on Thursday and on Friday. Did I do one? On th- I think I, I believe I did one on Thursday. Then you probably. There we go. Got to put the ticket in and let's let's hope it opens up. Okay. Uh, but you probably know that you know we my girlfriend had a little bit of a car issue, uh, so we went in to take care of the elderly lady together, which is why there was less videos last week. But we are also in the middle of shifting things around the house, meaning that we're moving up to the bigger space, and uh, we're we're also shifting into an office slash studio spot for me and her as well and we got a new roommate moving in by the end of the month uh our good pal Vinny Vincent Didiano who you guys have probably heard on Taboo Table Talk you guys have seen him on on some other shows that we've done together I've I've done his show P.O. Vincent in numerous times um but, uh, yeah, I, so we're doing that and it's been kind of busy. Uh, so that's part of the reason why, uh, there, there's been a little bit of delay in some of the, some of the stuff that I've been wanting to put out. Uh, one of those things being the virtual shows, I was going to do it on the last Friday of the month, but there's a lot going on. There's a blood drive, I have a doctor's appointment and our, our pal Vincent's come moving in. So we're, we're going to have to deal with quite a bit. And I felt like if I'm going to put the put my best foot forward and create a show, um, a good show about an important topic, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about one of the topics today, actually. But um, I figured I should give myself a little bit more buffer space, get settled in, get myself in the right headspace. Uh, so I'm going to push the show back to the last Friday in February and then consecutively the last Friday of every month. Going forward from there, that's going to be, uh, the, the plan, I think. And so, yeah, so that's a little bit of a delay. Uh, apologies on that, but the tickets are going to be coming out pretty soon. Uh, and those shows are going to be a combination of doing a little story from the road up at the top in the beginning of the uh, beginning of the show to kind of open things up to loosen everybody up a little bit and then get into the the main the nitty gritty. Uh, what does this mean? This means that there will probably be a little bit of a delay between uh, in in February. It'll be a little bit of a delay in forkfuls, which you know I hate doing, but. Uh, that, that's, it's necessary to, to ensure that I am actually like going to be able to move and get settled in properly. And that is something that in the past I have not done. And it's come back to bite me in the ass a couple times, you know, where, where, uh, one, if not all things will suffer, uh, the quality of, of one, if not all things will, will undoubtedly suffer because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of putting, uh, a smaller percentage of my energy into all these things. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Sign up for my email list. Go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. If you want free tickets, uh, sustaining members get free tickets. And, uh, again, if you're, if you're going through a financial difficulty, as as a lot of us uh, are at the moment, but if you're if you're on unstable financial grounds and and you still want to come to the, the show, shoot me an email, shoot me a message, and we will figure out a way to get you um, get you the, the 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 Zoom link to the show and such. Uh, other than that, I'm going to be doing some um, 
an extra live stream a week. And that's going to be on Mondays. There's a schedule shift with, uh, with the elderly lady that we watch. Uh, where, where we have Sundays and Mondays off. And Sunday has kind of become like our chill out weekly recovery day that, that I think everybody should get. They should get a day or two to just chill and recover. And then Mondays become, you know, errands and kind of housework kind of day. So I can kind of wake up a little bit earlier and talk about a couple of the stories uh, that, uh, you know, that, that, that went missing through the cracks, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so those are, those are some of the things. That are that are coming up. So uh, let's dive into into the big thing that I want to talk about today. And I think it's got. I know this is kind of a pop culture topic, but I'm going to talk about some of the um, some of the things that we're not going to hear in the mainstream media regarding Joe Biden's inauguration uh, to become the 46th president of the United States. Um, First of all, I, I, I wanna I wanna reiterate this point, and that point being, uh, nothing is gonna change with this administration. In fact, there's a good chance that uh, things will continue to get worse for a large group of people, uh, and we're gonna talk about why and how and all that kind of fun stuff. And. Right now, you know, D.C. is sort of like this hyper-militarized war zone. There's National Guard and the military's been, you know, and part of that is to take precautions of the events from January 6th. And part of that is because there's already a lot of information about some of these groups that are going to uh, hold some some kind of a demonstration, quote-unquote demonstration, um, at various different capitals across the country. Now, the thing that everybody needs to realize, as it was discovered within the blue leaks, uh, is is that the is law enforcement has worked side by side and hand in hand with white supremacists, with bigot, bigot, bigoted groups. Um, so, you know, I don't know, like, the, and then they let them into the Capitol itself. We saw that. I'm going to keep reiterating that point. The cops let them in. There was very few cops there, period, when they knew that this was coming. Um, and the National Guard was declined. They, they, they said no National Guard, uh, so again, I mean, what more proof do you need of the race, the racial divides in this country is like when you call for or not just a racial divide, but also the the ideological divide in this country of like when you call for uh, health care for everybody, not access to health care for everybody, but just get, like have, making sure everybody just has health care uh, and, and saying, hey, uh, maybe cops should not murder black people. Because they, you know, are either just walking down the street or committed a misdemeanor at best. Uh, because it's perpetuated that black people are dangerous in America. And has that, that myth has continued to be perpetuated for hundreds of thousands of years. So when you approach those things, they're like, oh, tear gas, rubber bullets, block off the streets, kettle the protesters, arrest all of them, and then, you know, get mad whenever... Uh, city, like, I'm behind a fucking Port Authority bus right now, but when those bus drivers refuse to uh, cart police officers down to protest lines and then take arrested protesters to jail. And now they have to kind of show faith, right? Because all this information has been revealed about what law enforcement actually is and what they actually represent that they are just bodyguards for rich people's stuff and they will collude with white supremacists as long as it means that rich people's stuff is safe from people fighting for equality. And now they're like, oh, 
we'll do something about it now. And so now they overcorrect. And, and what we're seeing in D.C. is this overcorrection from law enforcement where they're like, bring in all the National Guard and bring in the military. We got drones. But there's a guy, we, he made a robot. We don't know if the robot works, but we're going to equip it with a, uh, with a flamethrower. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, that's not technically RoboCop, but we've named it RoboCop. So now they have to overcorrect. And in the, in, in the first place, if, if the cops wouldn't have treated black people the way that they've been treating black people, maybe they wouldn't have had to overcorrect because when you knew there were going to be thousands of people that had been ordered to storm the fucking Capitol, you would have actually hired the right amount of police officers, uh, you know, to, to take care of that situation. So DC is basically like this ridiculous war zone manufactured to be that way now for the inauguration of Joe Biden and it's a direct result of neoliberalism leading to neo-fascism that's what it is and what we've done is just restart that cycle what we've done is is take a step back and go, oh, did neoliberalism cause neo-fascism? What if we just go back to neoliberalism? No, 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 no. You can't do that. And all the people, like myself, Jimmy Dore, Lee Camp, Rompelcone, Graham Elwood, Convo Couch with Fiorella and Pasta, uh, Nico House, the Action for Assange folks, uh... I'm probably missing a, a shit ton of people that, that have said this. All those people were ostracized for, for calling out Joe Biden for what he is. He is a neoliberal that will lead to another neo-fascist. And look, if he doesn't survive, let's say in two years he has a stroke or, or, or the Democrats decide that he's mentally unfit to lead the nation and, and get rid of the dude and put, put Kamala Harris in charge, and she gets to be president for four years, uh, she will also continue the reign of neoliberalism. And then in six years, we'll see neo-fascism. And we'll see a neo-fascism that's far worse than what Trump was. And this first point is going to essentially lock in this notion. Because, you know, everybody's talking about guests and what's the soundtrack going to be? And, oh, man, who's, who are they wearing? What's Jill Biden going to be wearing? Who's Joe Biden wearing? Kamala Harris, what kind of pantsuit is she going to be wearing? There's all of this, oh man, Major, what's the dog going to wear? Is he going to wear a sweater? Who are the guests of honor? Fall Out Boy is playing, you guys. Look how hip Joe and Kamala are because they're calling in Fall Out Boys. You know, the the, the artist that <laughs> who's bassist fucking freaked out at a concert and dove in and beat the shit out of somebody with his base which I think it, I think that's the follow up way is like the accurate representation of what the Biden administration is going to be it's going to be a bunch of it's going to be a bunch of like you know pop beats masquerading for just unfettered anger that's going to beat the shit out of a poor person that spent a lot of money to 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 support them. It's good. It's a good band to have represent imperialism, isn't it? <laughs> Just some fucking vapid pop nonsense. Just a, just five dudes trying to wax poetic about their cocks.
being like, girls are difficult, aren't they? My cock. That's the whole, but like put a little pop beat to it. Good. Anyway, um, the point is, <laughs> sorry, I fucking, I hate Fall Out Boy. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't like that band. I never liked that band. There was like two songs where I was like, all right, this isn't total garbage. Uh, one of the big prestigious guests that has been invited to the Biden and Biden inauguration um, are uh, Carlos Vecchio and Juan Guaido. Now, who is Carlos Vecchio for, for, for those that haven't been keeping up to date with the, uh, with the bipartisan coup that America has been uh, trying to implement in Venezuela? Carlos Vecchio is a former Venezuelan Exxon lawyer turned into a fake ambassador. Uh, and Juan Guaido is the fake president of Venezuela. And Carlos Vecchio is now his lawyer. Okay, this is who these people are. Uh, th- these are bad people. And what they represent is you know the what they what they really represent is 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 American imperialism. They're they're a brown face on American imperialism, the Latin American face of American imperialism. That's what they are. Now there is a bipartisan support of America's coup in Venezuela. And, and, and it is a coup. There's almost... One, when the name Juan Guaido is brought up in Venezuela, most people are like, who... Are, are you talking about that guy that showed us his butthole? As protest? Yeah, we'd all like to protest that dude's butthole. It was very unnecessary. Uh, and that is a true thing. That is actually something that Juan Guaido did. He mooned people as a form of protest. Uh, what was he protesting? Maybe just uh, the lack of buttholes. Maybe he was like, we need more buttholes in Venezuela and I will be the people's butthole. I will do that. My butthole is perfectly round. And this is the butthole that Venezuela needs. <laughs> but there is a bipartisan support to this. Because Trump had him as a special guest, Guan Guaido, as a special guest during his State of the Union address. And the second that he introduced, that he was introduced, Nancy Pelosi fucking shot up from her seat to applaud the man. Had he not been in a balcony, I, I would think that she would have just been schlobbing on his knob and Fall Out Boy would have written a new song about it. That would have been that would have been what happened, and then you know what what was the headline news of uh, of the day was uh, oh Nancy Pelosi ripped up Trump's speech oh my God what a, she's such a yas queen you did it you yast everything you yas queen she's the yayest of all the queens proof that we're living in a compartmentalized monarchy. Uh, <laughs> We got the Yas Queen on one side and the King of All Turtles on the other side. Pelosi and McConnell, so. There's bipartisan support of that. Now, here's the thing. The UN and a shit ton of countries were like, hey, maybe you shouldn't just randomly decide who is going to be the president of a foreign country and meddle in their elections kind of seems like a fucked up thing to do when for four years all you did was talk about how terrible it is that another country would meddle in America's elections. And you spread that conspiracy theory around. And even people that disagreed were like, yep, other countries shouldn't be meddling in other countries' fucking elections. 
And yet here we are getting bipartisan support to meddle in another country's election. But America's somewhere in the Constitution is written is uh, do uh, do as we say, not as we do. It's very meddlesome. It's very meddlesome when countries are like, "Hey, didn't you say that's a bad thing, but you're doing that bad thing?" And America's just like, "Can you just shut the fuck up, okay? Because th- you'll be next." Not only do most other countries in the UN recognize Nicolas Maduro as as the legally elected president of uh, of Venezuela, but Venezuela's elections are some of the most fair and best election processes, and and international election observers have said that about Venezuela's elections. They are some of the most fair and democratic elections in the whole world. They have multiple parties. They use exit polling. They use both electronic and paper ballots to ensure that uh, there is less fraud in the election process. And a corporation uh, doesn't get to uh, confirm your vote as it does in America. Which is kind of the funny thing is like, yes, there is election fraud in America. The Democrats have committed uh, election fraud against Bernie Sanders and virtually any third party in America. And when it comes to the general election, it's the Republicans that use gerrymandering, that use things like interstate cross-check, that fuck over the Postal Service. Both Democrats and Republicans have fucked over the Postal Service, by the way. And you know, getting rid of hundreds and thousands of people from the voter rolls because they changed their address. What America practices is uh, electoral imperialism where they go into another country, they claim their their leader is not the right leader, and then they say, this guy, we found him in a fucking conservative think tank. He's, he's the guy. And everybody's like, who the fuck are you talking about? Now, what's funny about this, that Vecchio and Guaido are invited to Biden's inauguration is is uh, the fact that uh, Carlos Vecchio, the the conservative opposition leader who was pissed off that Nicolas Maduro won, uh, did what Trump did. He staged. He he told his followers to attack the Capitol and stage a coup to to take the Capitol by storm. Right, and Vecchio was part of that. He, he encouraged people to do the, do the same thing. He kept chanting, no fear, no fear, no fear. And, uh, and then after his bullshit coup attempt, he was going to be arrested and put in prison for 13 years. So he fled to America. A couple things on this. Biden considered what happened on January 6th to be disgusting and awful and enough is enough is enough. Remember when he said that on on live television as as he made a statement? And he was like, Trump should say something. Why isn't Trump saying something? And then and at that point Trump had already put out his weird I love you speech but while he was telling people to go home. What a fucking bizarro speech that was. Well, if he considers what Trump did to be disgusting, then the same should go for Carlos Vecchio, who did the exact same thing and then participated in it. But Carlos Vecchio is invited to the inauguration, and Trump is demonized for basically doing the same thing. 
I don't know, Joey B, you're not even inaugurated, sending a lot of mixed messages if you ask me. Sounds like somebody's brain is confused. Trying to rationalize electoral imperialism and their hatred for Trump. And realizing that you have been in bed with someone that does the exact same things as this person you hate viscerally. And Biden does hate Trump viscerally. Again, the reason why Biden hates Trump viscerally has nothing to do with his demagoguery, but the fact that he is the perfect representation of what America is. Um, And then, basically letting this guy come into the country uh, uh, to, to not face criminal charges for what he did. Whereas now, it's, the FBI is like, can someone help us figure out who these people are? Because before we used to be friends with them, and then they defriended us from Facebook when we said we were going to investigate them, and now we don't have a way to keep in touch. They will offer someone that led a coup in Venezuela, failed coup, Venezuela, basically offering him asylum. But someone like Julian Assange has to be extradited for being a journalist that revealed American war crimes and American corporate crimes. And the fact that the CIA is, uh, is, is going against the Constitution. They've committed constitutional crimes. Seems like a discrepancy, doesn't it? And it is, and that is something that I think you can expect from the Biden administration uh, or the Harris administration. You can expect these hypocrisies. We've already seen it. And these hypocrisies are encouraged within the Democratic Party. It's part of the reason why everybody, all the progressives are so hard on this party. Why, whenever there are progressives that go in and say we're gonna we're gonna reform the system from within, which is impossible to do because because the Democratic Party is so corrupt and broken, and doesn't represent has and has never represented the will of the people, never, not once. You can maybe make the claim for FDR, but that's. It's still like a very thin justification because the dude was connected to the banking industry and the only reason why he did anything was because there was there was a, a upswell of general strikes across the country. That him and his fucking economic advisor uh, said was treason. FDR did. And when public pers- that when when that failed and public persuasion was pro general strike. He decided, okay, I should probably listen to what these people have to do and, and give, you know, uh, unions more power and workers more power because if not, then this thing might th- this thing might legitimately become a, a, a another, you know, class war. So FDR's eh, a gray area at best. The problem is that these progressives aren't pushing Biden to the left. They're not pushing anybody to the left. They what they what they end up doing is that they left on uh, they they run on these super lefty policies, and then when they come into the party, even though there's a coalition of them, they bend to the will of the the party. What ends up happening to them is by being within the Democratic Party, they move further to the right. As the people that got them elected move further to the left. Another thing you'll probably see within the Democratic Party under Biden, uh, the Biden-Harris administration, is you'll see a lot of, a lot of people that thought progressively and were, were 
championing a lot of progressive ideologies start making excuses and shifting further to the right. The, the Democratic Party diehards, right? And then the people that, that were barely hanging on to the Democratic Party are going to shift over to the left. And, I, and I've, I've said this in a prior uh, video before, but if you really want to make an impact to show the Democratic Party uh, that they are full of shit and that you're not going to take their garbage anymore, fucking leave the party. Re-register. If that happens en masse, if a couple hundred thousand people remove their registration from the Democratic Party, you don't think the party's going to notice? That's a thought that I had. Expect this level of hypocrisy and electoral imperialism mixed with the regular imperialism that you would see from the Biden administration because that's what they're showing at the inauguration by inviting Guan Guaido the fake fucking president of Venezuela and his fucking coup plotting former oil executive lawyer to the fucking inauguration they played their fucking hands man and they're showing it to you and those Democratic diehards are going, that, that's fine, I guess. We'll do some sort of mental gymnastics and live in the lie so we can be complacent and go get our fucking mimosas for brunch. And pretend that fascism only exists in the right wing. To pretend that when Biden comes in, all of the bad things will go away. They will. They'll just get swept under the rug and they'll operate under the rug. Because there's a hatch under the rug. And that hatch leads to all the secret bullshit that you've ignored. That all of a sudden you started paying attention to when, when Trump showed up. Because you didn't want that to be the, what America looked like. Not only is, what Trump, not only is, is Trump what America looks like. It's what America behaves like. It's what America represents. It's the ideologies that America carries. And that's what pissed people off the most. Because... Even liberals have this hyper-individualistic, nationalistic pride. They believe America to be number one, that they're the best democracy in the world. And only if they have someone from their Democratic Party, someone that's a little bit more liberal, will, that, will they uphold that level of number one-ism and, and nationalism that they have. No, no, but Trump is what that is. And Biden's no different. They just showed you who they are. Showed you that they're imperial coup plotters that are willing to accept people from a different country that has oil that they want. They'll accept those people and they've done the exact same thing that they condemn in America. They are hypocritical electoral imperialists. Let's move to a little bit of a fun topic with the inauguration, shall we? Uh, let's talk about the soundtrack, right? And there is something pertinent, again, to kind of show you what the next four years are going to bring. Um, what I've read is, uh, MinPress News covered this. Uh, the last story, by the way, Gray Zone, excellent publications. Um... What they what, what Min Press News showed was one of Biden's uh, soundtracks. These aren't I don't think these are people playing or performing at the inauguration like Fall Out Boy, but uh, these are, I guess people like walk on music or whatever. There's going to be Kendrick Lamar and one of them is MF Doom. First of all, huge fuck you to both those artists. Huge fuck you to both those artists. Kendrick Lamar is. <laughs> Man, Kendrick Lamar does not give a shit about the Democratic Party and co-opting his music to make it sound that way. And I can tell you, I, I, MF Doom probably is on that same boat. Is like, I don't think he gives a shit about the Obama administration. 
Uh, but this is just a ploy, man, to be like, aren't we hip and cool? We're listening to Kendrick. It's the same thing as fucking Kamala Harris being like, I smoked weed once. And then I listened to Biggie Smalls. That's the name I heard once. Somebody told me Biggie Smalls and he said the rap words. I saw the movie Notorious. I didn't watch it, you know. It was kind of in the background as I was uh, putting more black people in prison. And telling single mothers that it's their fault that their kids are truant. I didn't really watch it. But I thought about watching it, and it was playing in the background. So I know about the Biggie Smalls. Okay, and there was marijuana in that movie, and I think I might have gotten a contact high from just watching that movie. So, you know, marijuana, I've done it. It's happened. It's the same thing. And everybody's like, what What are you doing? She did the same thing. Medicare for all. She's like, yeah. And then Sienna, they were like, wait a minute, didn't you say you weren't? And she's like, no, I misunderstood the question. How could you misunderstood the question, are you for or against Medicare for all? Raise your hand if you are for Medicare for all. I misunderstood it. What I heard was, are you willing to let Americans die for the sake of health care profits, the insurance profits? I got confused. They're just using them as a ploy. These people don't know Kendrick Lamar's music. They don't know what the, what his music actually stands for. Have they fucking listened to it? Have they actually gotten into? Okay, here's something I, I used to love doing, and I'm uh, I, I wish I got the opportunity to do it more. Is I used to just love fucking getting into my car and listening to an album, top to top, top to bottom, and just being on the road throughout that entire thing, right? And just absorbing it, and then I would listen to it again, in my headphones and shit. I love doing that stuff. It's, uh, you know, and I would listen to it and like see what I can pick up from it. I, I bet you they've never fucking done that with anything. And they're fucking claiming that they're Kendrick fans. Eat a bag of dicks. Now, MF Doom is an even bigger fuck you to that artist. MF Doom passed away, uh, unfortunately. And I, I like I'm I'm a fan of MF Doom. If you uh, if you've come to my virtual shows, you know I play a little like I play music, in, in, you know, uh, like for the pre-show, as people are coming in and getting settled into into the virtual showroom. MF Doom is part of that soundtrack. So is Kendrick. There are a lot of really great um, rap artists. Some real like it's 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 like group music. It's music that talks about the struggle, talks about the issues, talks about real shit. Not make not sit there and have fucking four white boys that wax poetic about their cocks, and then when people don't like them, they beat the shit out of them with their bass. Fucking latent hyper masculine bullshit yeah that's what Fall Out Boy is I know I I really hate Fall Out Boy <laughs> but MF Doom here's here's what under the Biden administration uh, I'm sorry by the Obama administration I get them mixed up because they're blurring into one uh, under the Obama administration MF Doom uh, moved to the United States with, with his mom prior to the Obama administration, obviously. Uh, and he went on tour in, in the UK, and then when he came back in 2010, he was not allowed to come back into the country. They blocked his immigrant status, and then he had to move back to um, uh, the UK. They, they had to figure out how to get back to the UK and stay there. Why? I don't know. Just because. ICE wouldn't let him back into the country. They were just like, hey, you seem... You're black enough that we don't like you, is basically the way that they looked at it. You're the wrong hue of brown. Are you going to become a doctor that's going to support neoliberal economic policies? 
no, then fuck off. We don't want your kind of brown here. Are you going to go bomb brown people? Are you going to bomb other brown people and make that look cool? No, then fuck off. We don't want you here. That's the way that the, uh, the immigration fucking operates, right? Maybe this is a good time to bring this thing up. The whole, like, model fucking immigrant, right? Uh, liberals give me that shit all the time. I'm not the model immigrant. I'm a little too I'm a little too aggressive. I'm a little too much on edge. I'm a little too much of a fucking socialist for them, and I don't give a shit about supporting the Democratic Party. Henceforth, I'm not a model fucking immigrant to uh, to liberals. I'm just not. Not that I give a fuck about being a model immigrant. Doing the little Indian accent and a little jig for you guys and being like Republicans are crazy, huh? Boy, those Democrats sure will save us brown people. We need those squishy white liberals to save the browns. Then they'll give me a fucking Netflix special or some shit. I, that, that's the only way you can be a brown person or a black person in America and be truly accepted by liberals. Or you can be like MLK, uh, where you were that radical of an individual but in order to you know make you sound acceptable in their terms they soften the blow and they and they co-opt some of your phrases take them out of context and and flip them upside down to serve their fucking bullshit pseudo racist agendas anyway mf doom gets Deported. That's what happened to him. He got deported. And now, and Biden was part of that administration. That's a, a mass deportations under the Obama administration. More deportations than the last few administrations combined. Right? And now they have the fucking balls to use one of his tracks on their soundtrack. What a fuck. I hope these artists sue them. I hope, I hope whoever, you know, uh, now has majority control of MF Doom's work fucking sues their ass. I hope Kendrick sues them. And again, that is, they're, they're hinting. Hey, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to use... This rapper's dead, but we deported him. And we're going to use his song. Because fuck you. What a disrespectful thing to do. And if Biden doesn't remember... That's an even bigger fuck you. Because all that means is there were so many deportations with Obama-Biden. That they all blurred into one. And that, again, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see another, uh, another round of harsher immigration status. Harsher immigration policies under Biden. They're not going to clear up. They're not going to get better. This dude hasn't fucking changed in the last eight years. He's gotten older. He's gotten way more angry. And he himself feels like he's the, you know, some weird form of destiny for him to become president. He has his own fucking white savior liberal god complex. And this dude is going to create mass deportations and he's going to create worse criminal justice reforms. He wants to create a police oversight committee. Great. Who's going to be on that? It's going to be regular citizens. How, and, then he, and then he's like, well, I want to give the police more money. What? They already get $6 billion, NYPD. A couple hundred million for the LAPD. I mean, how much more money do they need? They get so much money that they, at this point, could have done some training programs that didn't involve seeing black people as criminals and dangerous.
what we need is more social programs, more focus on mental health, a decrease in poverty. Biden administration ain't going to do any of that. How are you going to help a, a, an entire country that's been traumatized by not Trump, but decades of neoliberal economic policies? I was talking to my girlfriend about this yesterday of like how you could be a librarian and still go on vacation once a year to a different country making, you know, average wage. Whereas now if you made average wage, you you can't even take a fucking vacation to Delaware. Who can afford it? That's you you you're willing to lose a week's worth of pay and then pay a bunch of additional money? Get the fuck out of here. Nobody can afford that shit. Well, so some people can afford that shit, but those people are fucking rich. Having a rapper be that you deported be a part of your soundtrack is a, the biggest fuck you. It's so disrespectful. And it's a signal. It's a signal to immigrants and people of color that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do not respect you. You are tokens to them. You are a political play to try to appeal to the youth vote. That's it. On the continuing track of looking beyond the inauguration itself, let's look at the first of 100 days or what's projected to be, uh, what's projected to happen in the first 100 days of the uh, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris administrations. First thing he wants to do is uh, uh, give coronavirus aid and an, another $1.9 trillion COVID aid. Um, which is going to include a stimulus payment and unemployment, extended unemployment. Didn't we try this? Didn't we do this before? I feel like we just did this. Look, I understand Americans' um, memory is, is, is the equivalent of, of a goldfish, where people don't remember shit that happened like a week ago. Um, you know, like the only things we're not supposed to forget is 9-11 and the fact that uh, Trump, 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 we hate Trump, 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 Orange Man, bad, Orange Man, bad, Trump, 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 Trump. Those are the only things that are prevalent in American history. You know, contemporary American history, I should say, sorry. But, uh... Come on, this was not that long ago that we tried this whole one-time stimulus plus extended unemployment. All the same people that got loopholed out, including myself and, ver- I mean, a ton of other people that I know, uh, artists and comedians and, and, you know, people that are crazy poor and work under the table because they're that poor, uh, they'll, they'll fall through the cracks. A simple way to do this is you census information and social security numbers to say if you have a social security number then we will give you this unemployment benefit holy shit a ubi oh man what fun but he's not he's doing the same thing that they did before all he's doing is is you know changing up the numbers it's all surface level shit with this with with the Democratic Party. We tried. It failed. A lot of people were left to suffer in poverty. A lot of people didn't get their benefits. A lot of people didn't get their one-time payment. And who wins out in the end? It's Joe Biden. See, it's the federal government. It's corporations who got trillions of dollars. Jeff Bezos 
made an additional over $70 billion to his personal wealth. To his personal wealth. He was well on his way to become a trillionaire. And Biden wants to try that process again. Not only that, the, but this stimulus is this one time stimulus payment, which, by the way, I'm not eligible for, um, is now $1,400. Interesting. Wasn't it that if Georgia won, this was a big deal, if Georgia won and went to the Democrats, that uh, we we're going to get those two thousand dollars. Was that was that proposed? Was, didn't didn't Joe Biden say that? Strange. Now that it's fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, that's right. You got shifty with the numbers. He's going to say, well, we did give you $2,000. No, 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 no. You gave us $600 and then promised us $2,000 on top of that. Now you're, you're, you're sitting there and saying it's $1,400 plus that $600. That was the $2,000 I was talking about. You fudged it. That's not what you said. You should have made it clear. I will give you $2,000 total, which is inclusive of the $600. If you would have made a statement like that, everybody would have been like, man, no one gives a shit. Fuck off. And the Democratic Party ain't here to help us. And now they're showing. Now, now they're showing it. They're showing their true colors. Again, thought it was two thousand dollars, Joe. Why is it fourteen hundred? By the way, that saves the federal government one hundred and sixty-four billion dollars that they can now put into war or corporate loopholes or help corporations out a little bit more. One hundred and sixty-four billion dollars more to pump into the Fed. Well, hell, the, the uh, Secretary of Treasury is, is a woman that runs the Fed. Get ready for that shit to happen. Where they'll get shifty about what they said. They won't really reveal the whole thing. And then they'll use semantics to fuck over the American people. Get ready for that shit to happen. And it will. Over and over again. And we're supposed to take these breadcrumbs as progress. That's that's an exhausting fucking argument to make, isn't it? Is this like breadcrumbs of progress? Is like how long how long are fucking squishy liberals gonna make that argument? It's so fucking annoying to me. Well, at least at least it's not super fascism. It's just crypto fascism. Holy vey. Proposed a $15 minimum wage. Cool. That would have been great 10 years ago. Minimum wage has not increased for a decade? More? Should have been 15, 10 years ago. When I got out of college, I should have been making $15 an hour minimum. Now it should be upwards of 30 probably. With, with uh, it, might even, it might even be more than that. I'm not sure. The reason why they choose this $15 minimum wage or or they agree on $15 minimum wage is because it's no longer a threat to the oligarchs. That amount isn't going to change the fact that the CEOs of a lot of these corporations are still going to make three to four hundred times that of the of, of a minimum wage employee. And yeah, this will this will help Americans, but you've bludgeoned them so hard with poverty. 
then any sort of pay increase would have helped them. Two thousand dollars, just an additional two thousand dollars to their to their annual income, increases their increases their livelihoods by eleven percent. Eleven percent, just two thousand dollars. That's not that much money. And it increases somebody's annual salary by eleven percent. Here's something else that he's proposed. This was in all the advertising advertisements that he put out there. Twelve point four percent tax on people making four hundred thousand dollars or more. Now, here's the question. Because again, I told you this administration is gonna be shifty. Are you cutting out are you cutting out tax loopholes for corporations and billionaires because for years now they have paid next nothing or, or next to nothing uh, in taxes. Under the Eisenhower administration, if you were a corporation, then you got taxed at 90%. So if you made a bunch of money, if you made millions and millions of dollars, then your corporation is getting taxed at 90% of that wealth. Because you could afford it. That is no longer the case, obviously. Because you have people like Jeff Bezos, who is close to being a trillionaire, paying zero in taxes. Because of, you know, little loopholes and, oh, it's in stocks and it's in bonds and this is in the Caymans and this is... Uh, actually something that it, I've reinvested it into a cock ring that my wife got me or, and, and that is uh, tax deductible because then I donated to the cock ring to, uh, to, you know, young boys who are getting their first erections. So it's a donation. So I, don't, I can't be taxed on anything. Think about all those young boys that are getting those boners and not knowing what to do with them. And I donated this prestigious cock ring to them. That's fucking it's him getting away with it so are you canceling those loopholes because what then what what will happen then is is these these corporations will end up paying taxes but they only end up paying taxes on four hundred thousand dollars when they're making upwards of billions and trillions of dollars is joe biden canceling those loopholes It's likely that he's not. It's likely that those loopholes are going to stay exactly where the fuck they are. And with a $15 an hour minimum wage, corporations are still going to hire people part-time. And that $15 an hour... Now, here's the other thing that you're supposed to do, that, that you should do, is you should put a freeze on the rent. You can't jack up your rents now, right? $15 minimum wage, uh, uh, you know, you raise a minimum wage to $15. Uh, and now that means that uh, landlords and, um, you know, private industry can't just jack up the prices of their shit. So there should be a freeze on that. That should be part of the $15 an hour minimum wage increase. Again, they get shifty with it. Oh, we won the fight for the $15 minimum wage. Yay. Oh, shit. Everything's going back up. And now we're still stuck in fucking poverty. Which then perpetuates the crime rates because when you're you're a desperate person, you do desperate things. to reality you're still going to keep people at part time you're still not going to offer them fucking health care benefits any of those sort of things all of that is still going to be allowed for corporations to do even though they have a $15 an hour minimum wage which is still too low So, again, shifty, shifty, not getting the whole story, leaving some details out. 
to make yourself look nice. That's it. But you're still going to be a corporatist, anti-worker, fucking pro-billionaire president. Just like everybody else. This, this let's return to the status quo where it's all nicey-nice and we can pretend like America is awesome. Now, there's another thing that's coming out of this, too, which is state and local, state and local taxes. There's a cap on uh, major deductions for state and local at $10,000. This shit gets complicated, as, as tax reform and tax codes always do. But there's a cap, right? You can't get more than $10,000 on deductions. And uh, they're trying to make that unlimited. They're trying to remove this cap so that you can get how many ever deductions you need. And who is this going to affect is the top 1%. Again, like I mentioned, $2,000 to 60% of Americans is an 11% boost to their annual income. The top 1% would get, on average, uh, an additional $33,000 deductions in their taxes under this plan that Biden's putting out. So guess who guess who gets fucked again? So he's not it's, there's all these little loopholes. There's all these little shifty things that he's doing. The mad shows that by the end of Biden's fucking first 100 days We're going to increase the, the, the income gap. A lot more people are going to be in poverty. When you have people in poverty that need to buy food, that need to figure out how to pay rent, that have to worry about how to ensure that their family is going to have health care, the most desperate of those, the most destitute of those, are probably going to start committing crimes. So this whole thing of, oh, well, we're going to decrease crime in America and all this other shit. Yeah, you criminalize poverty that way. And you go after poor people. You, you, you attack poor people. That's what you do. You haven't gotten rid of anything. You haven't made any, made life better for a majority of people. You've made life better for billionaires. You've made life better for corporations. I just saw something the other day where he's going to uh, stop the Keystone Excel pipeline. There was a Supreme Court case that said, uh, we don't give a shit. Let the pipeline do whatever the fuck it wants. After all of this, the, the imperialism, the disrespect to the communities of color and immigrants and using them as tokens, after all of that, why are people still supporting the Democratic Party? Why are still people supporting Joe Biden and any of the fucking crypto fascist imperialists in his fucking cabinet? If you want to push Joe Biden to the left, then it's time that we started enacting some general strikes. The trucking industry, the grocery industry, fucking agricultural industry, hair salons, they all decided to go on strike. That would huh, that would make him quake in his boots. And yeah, he would get shitty. And yeah, he would probably do the same thing that Trump did and send that National Guard after these folks. Spin some fucking McCarthyist lies about them. But when all that fails, 
guess who has to be brought into the negotiating table? The working class people of America. Who haven't been at the working uh, at the negotiating table for upwards of, you know, close to a hundred years now. It doesn't lie in, in electoral politics. Change it doesn't lie in electoral politics. It, it lies in direct action, and it lies in the way that people choose to live their lives. If you want a more compassionate government, you, we are going to have to become a more compassionate populace, a more educated, and more uh, a, a populace that values critical thought. And this whole, well, Biden's in office, we can all go back to sleep bullshit is just going to keep perpetuating the same thing. And in four to six years, we'll see another fucking neo-fascist pop up. Happy inauguration, people. <laughs> uh, I am gonna bring I am gonna bring this video to an end here. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you do enjoy my content, you know the usual: like, share, subscribe. Uh, make sure you are uh, hitting the bell icon to get notifications uh, about my channels. And if you're sick of the the censorship on YouTube, the censorship on Facebook. Uh, follow me on Rockfin. A lot of great people on Rockfin. If you if you endorse my channel and, and subscribe to my channel uh, and and leave tips and all that, uh, you 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 not only get my premium content, um, but you get premium content from uh, a ton of other people. Uh, Ron Placone, Lee Camp, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, The Convo Couch, uh, Action for Assange, uh, tons of folks. Uh, you get premium content from. So I highly encourage people to go subscribe to, uh, on, on the on the old Rockfins if you haven't already. It's rockfin.com slash Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Um, I will say the caveat to that is if you're if you're kind of an average, uh, like oh, every so often I pop up on YouTube, but you're not like somebody that follows YouTube content creators um, or content creators in general. And you're, you know, you're, you're like, oh, I like Chris's stuff. I like some of Ron's stuff. I like Graham Elwood. I like some of uh, these other people's stuff. I'm not an avid watcher. Rockfin might not be your cup of tea. Uh, if, if, and, and if you're still on financial stable ground, and you're like, well, I still want to help, then become a sustaining member. Make a one-time contribution. Uh, various different ways that you can help out. Um, Go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com slash donate uh, and become a sustaining member there. K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. Become that sustaining member. Make a monthly contribution. Uh, get You get free tickets to shows. You get bonus uh, comedy content there. So you get a ton of really great stuff by becoming a sustaining member. But by no means is that an absolute necessity, right? It's not an absolute necessity. Uh, the best thing to do if you can't contribute financially is to keep watching and hit that share button, hit that like button, uh, so, so the, this video gets out to as many people as possible. Uh, once again, website is krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Check it out there. Past episodes of this show. All my stand-up comedy content, all my stand-up comedy albums, a uh, bunch of cool stuff on that channel. It's basically the one-stop shop for all things Chris Moen. Uh, live streams on Fridays, Taboo Table Talk on Thursdays, and I'm going to be adding another live stream on Mondays as well. Stream on YouTube, Facebook, and Rockfin. Uh, sign up for my email list if you want uh, to get an email once a week telling you guys all the things that's happening with me, all the videos and podcasts that I've released throughout the week. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for those virtual tickets. Those are coming up uh, soon. I will be putting them up soon. It has been quite hectic with the move and uh, a lot of the changes that have been going on. Um, but uh, uh, it's good hectic. You know what I mean? It's positive hectic. So i um, excited for all that, uh, but until the next video, thank you guys for tuning in. 
You guys are awesome, and we'll see you on the road. Bye.